Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Sound Science, the monthly recap of the most exciting news and research trends in tinnitus. My name is Ben Thompson, joined with two audiologists from Treble Health, Dr. Michelle Nyman Kennedy and Dr. Tracy Peck Holcomb. So the first article is looking at a case study. It's about acupuncture treatment after COVID-19 associated hearing loss and tinnitus. They were reviewing what happened to a 32-year-old male who had severe hearing loss and tinnitus in their right ear six days after they were diagnosed with COVID-19. They were first treated with a 10-day course of steroids, but neither the hearing loss nor the tinnitus actually improved. Afterwards, they were treated via acupuncture. So they had about nine sessions of acupuncture. After the first session, the individual reported a reduction in the overall tinnitus volume. And then after six sessions, they also started to note an improvement in their hearing as well as the tinnitus volume. And they were completing the tinnitus handicap inventory at different points in time. And their scores had actually dropped from pre-treatment where the score was 75 points down to 32 points. After nine sessions, the individual's hearing had actually come back to normal. So when they did a hearing test, their hearing was completely within normal limits from 250 to 8,000 hertz. And the last tinnitus handicap inventory that they completed resulted in a score of four points. So their scores improved significantly as compared to the 75 point score that they first received. Then they looked back at how well the individual was doing one month after their treatment stopped. And their symptoms were stable, so they didn't have any more hearing loss and they weren't experiencing any more tinnitus or very little tinnitus. So the researchers believe that acupuncture helps this person not only with their hearing loss, but also with their tinnitus. And some of the justification has to do it was able to increase and improve cochlear blood flow. And it also helped to promote neuroplastic changes within the auditory cortex. One question that comes to mind with this case study relative to acupuncture being used as a treatment for hearing loss and for tinnitus with a, with a sudden sensory neural hearing loss, indicating that there's uh, more permanent changes to the sensory cells in the inner ear and potentially the auditory nerve as well. Wondering about, you know, what actually changes and improves naturally in terms of tinnitus and how all of that is processed by not only the peripheral and the central part of the auditory system naturally over time, especially as somebody is improving from the symptoms of COVID and what might be um, actually related to the acupuncture treatments and sort of, you know, delineating between the two. Um, I think acupuncture has been studied for many, many years relative to being a potential tinnitus treatment. And a lot of the research indicates, you know, no sort of clinically significant long-term sustainable treatment for tinnitus, but I think that it can be really useful um, in terms of helping lower stress levels and anxiety levels as part of a holistic approach to treatment. So I think that this case study brings uh, to mind that it, it can play a part, but I don't, I don't think that it's the sole factor uh, likely in this, in this case study. Yeah, I would agree. My first interpretation is that I was excited. I said, wow, this seems promising. And I think for anyone who's reading this or just reads the headline of this, they would they would leave feeling like, wow, acupuncture is a treatment for hearing loss and tinnitus. But if you ask 100 tinnitus specialists that question, they would say, no, acupuncture is not a leading treatment for tinnitus. And it's also unproven whether it, it hasn't been proven that it works compared to a control group. And this study shows the success story of one individual, which is noteworthy. And acupuncture may, may, may very well have been a primary um, factor in why this person got better, because that's how these things can work. For one individual with their makeup of symptoms and what's going on, that targeted treatment could have changed the ear nerve relationship and helped promote the healing process. Because sudden hearing losses with tinnitus can improve uh, sometimes with steroid treatment, which was tried in this case, sometimes just waiting and seeing and, and uh, seeing if the hearing loss naturally restores. And when the hearing loss gets better, the tinnitus may get better with it. And then there's other treatments that we can use over time to help 
uh, reduce tinnitus or improve hearing loss. But that is my main message on this article, that one case study does not mean that that treatment should be used on a population level or for everyone. There is a place for acupuncture. I would consider it more of a a secondary or even third layer approach as opposed to a primary approach for someone who has tinnitus or uh, sudden hearing loss. Yes, I couldn't agree more with both of your points. I think that a lot of, you know, I've worked with a lot of individuals in the past who had sudden sensory neural hearing losses and some individuals, their hearing loss did improve and their tinnitus did improve even a few months afterwards. So I think with a lot of the otologists that I worked with, the likelihood if there's going to be an improvement would happen within the first six months. And then maybe up to 12 months after that, very unlikely that hearing loss or tinnitus would improve. But for many individuals, it does just improve sporadically. And whatever other treatments one might have been doing alongside it could have helped, may, maybe didn't have any impact. But along the lines of what Dr. Tracy said, I think acupuncture can be very relaxing. I think it can also be something more concrete of a treatment and help an individual deal with some of the stressors related to having tinnitus and a newfound hearing loss. So again, it has, I think, a place within the toolkit, but I don't think it's a primary toolkit for managing tinnitus like Dr. Ben had mentioned. This is a short interruption from today's video to announce the tinnitus quiz. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you or someone you know has tinnitus. We know how much tinnitus can impact your daily life, and we're here to help. Visit tinnitusquiz.com and take a two-minute quiz to receive personalized treatment plans that have helped hundreds of people learn to manage their tinnitus. Start now at tinnitusquiz.com. The second article that we're going to be discussing is one that's looking at the effect of transcranial electrical stimulation on reducing anxiety in those with chronic tinnitus. So they were looking at whether or not combining transcranial electrical stimulation with cognitive behavioral therapy helped the overall anxiety levels of those with tinnitus. And it was a small population size that they used. So they actually only had about 30 individuals, 15 were in the experimental group. Those 15 were receiving cognitive therapy alongside transcranial electrical stimulation. And then the other 15, the other half, were only receiving transcranial electrical stimulation. So these individuals were receiving several sessions of, of therapy and stimulation, and they were having their anxiety scores evaluated um, at different intervals, so pre-treatment and post-treatment. The individuals who were receiving cognitive therapy alongside transcranial electrical stimulation had a greater decline in their anxiety scores than the individuals who were just receiving transcranial electrical stimulation. So what the conclusion was is that since anxiety is one of the most common symptoms that people with tinnitus also suffer from, it seems to be that the combination of cognitive therapy, which was focused in this case on mindfulness strategies, was the most effective way of treating their anxiety levels alongside another form of treatment like transcranial electrical stimulation, but the transcranial electrical stimulation alone didn't have a significant, it didn't have a significant decline in their anxiety scores. So they believe that maybe alone transcranial electrical stimulation isn't sufficient enough to help manage the symptoms of tinnitus. But when we add in some other layers like cognitive therapy, or tinnitus retraining therapy or any other kind of form of therapy, you'll notice the biggest improvement to tinnitus as well as anxiety. I'm going to pull up some images on the screen right now to show us what transcranial electrical stimulation looks like. As we can see on the screen here, there's a red and a blue marker on the headband that the individual uses. And then there's electric stimulation that comes through this device. I can say that as an audiologist who's worked at major hospital clinics, and all of us here on this call here have worked in major, major centers that focus on tinnitus, working with the best ENT doctors in our respective city in New York or San Francisco, right? How this is not something that is recommended for tinnitus uh, at this moment, I would consider this an experimental research, and for that reason, I'm I'm happy to see that it helped complement the cognitive or mindfulness-based therapies for someone who's suffering with tinnitus. Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway from this study is that a combination approach 
you know, regardless of what uh, the combination of treatments is, typically yields the greatest results. So, you know, standalone treatments and sort of putting all your eggs in one basket, if you will, tends to have more limited outcomes, patient outcomes and treatment outcomes than the combination of addressing kind of, you know, the sound itself, the anxiety, the other coexisting conditions that go along with the tinnitus itself. So I think that's the main takeaway for me from this one. Combination approach in general is better than uh, standalone uh, approaches for overall success with tinnitus. I think that's also what a lot of the research that evaluates different methods of managing tinnitus tends to say, and similar to what our last research article is going to discuss too. But it, when I read this study, it reminded me about some of the things my patients who have used Lanier, um, who traveled before it was now available in the US, traveled to Europe to get it, had told me about how they felt it helped their tinnitus. And they said, I had like, um, I would say maybe like two or three patients who traveled to Europe for it. And they all felt that their tinnitus had improved, but they themselves could not rule out that it wasn't also due in part to working with us here at Trouble Health or their own mindfulness, meditation, stress management strategies that they were doing on the side. So again, I think it's always important to try to manage tinnitus through a combination approach, having various tools and that's going to be what yields the best results. And I think, yeah, that's obviously the main takeaway from this study. So that leads us to our final study, which was, it was more of like an overview study looking at directed attention and habituation, two concepts that were found to be critical to tinnitus management. So Dr. Henry is a very big researcher in the audiology field and especially with tinnitus. And he was looking at four of the most popular behavioral methods of tinnitus management. So CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, TRT, tinnitus retraining therapy, TAT, tinnitus activities treatment, and PTM, progressive tinnitus management. And he was looking at what elements each of these treatments use in order to better manage the symptoms of tinnitus. And they found, he found that all four of the methods were using some form of directed attention as part of the counseling, as well as habituation as like the ultimate goal of what you're trying to accomplish. And I think that it's really important for those of us who have tinnitus to understand that these really are two of the most important things that if you're working with someone, they should be focusing on methods and strategies to help you redirect your attention in a more positive manner, should be educating you on what habituation really means. And habituation doesn't mean just not hearing the sound ever again. You know, for some individuals that does happen, but for others, it's about not having it bother you anymore, not thinking about it anymore. And therefore your overall perception of it really does tend to decline. But if you focus on it once again, you may be able to hear it to the same extent that you were previously when the tinnitus was disruptive to you. I'd be interested to hear what Dr. Tracy and Dr. Ben think about directed attention and habituation being critical components of an effective tinnitus management strategy. I think the concept and application of directed attention or sort of engaging in in activities or other strategies that help to shift the focus away from the tinnitus as much as possible is a critical part of a treatment um, approach for tinnitus. Because what it does is it, you know, in the moment, it allows you to, it allows your brain, right? Your brain has to focus on something else. Therefore, taking the attention and the focus away from the tinnitus, even if it's, even if it's temporary, even if it's just, you know, momentary for when people first start applying this approach. And I think it seems like, oh, it's so, you know, that, how is that going to help me? I think I get that question. Like, what is that going to do for my tinnitus? And I think if it's done consistently, just like any other strategy and technique, it has to be, that skill has to be built and it has to be really intentionally done every day. Whenever your thoughts are kind of going down that sort of negative, you know, rabbit hole um, around the tinnitus, that being able to shift to something more positive, either thought-wise or behavior and activity-wise, the more you engage in something that you enjoy, that is a positive experience, the more that um, promotes overall neuroplasticity and habituation to the tinnitus in the long term. So it's a it's a primary strategy that we work with patients on because I think it has it's so beneficial um, overall in the beginning phases of habituation to the very end. Research has shown that having that guided roadmap and coaching along the way of the 
tinnitus reduction process of the journey of tinnitus relief uh, matters a lot. And the psychological based methods of restructuring thoughts and having awareness of automatic negative reactions towards tinnitus make a big difference. It's easy for us to glance over that and say, mm, I'm looking for a device to solve this. Mm, I'm looking for a cure. Mm, I just want something I can put on, put in my ear and make it go away or take a pill and let it and make it go away. We all want those things too. And there are medical devices for tinnitus. There is more and more research for tinnitus. There are solutions that can help today. Whatever approach we're using, the results are accelerated when we use these cognitive restructuring techniques. So make sure to work with a tinnitus specialist like those at Tribal Health or others to help you along the way. Thanks for watching this episode of Sound Science. Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment below if you have questions or research topics you want us to cover next week. Check the video link above to watch the last Sound Science episodes and a big thank you to Dr. Michelle and Dr. Tracy.